This is my review of the Birds album, Mr. Tambourine Man. It was released in 1965 and produced by Terry Melcher. Um, so I realized I kind of made a mistake after I'd like listened to this whole album. I should have started tonight with um, what was it, Pre-Flight, and uh, I keep forgetting I have that one because I just got it pretty recently. Um, so I'm going to review that album next week instead of uh, Turn, Turn, Turn. So it's going to be this album, then Pre-Flight, then Turn, Turn, Turn. I should have done it the other way around, but I'd already listened to this album and got all ready to review it, so I wasn't going to sit and listen to another album because it's already late. Um, so anyway, uh, this would have been, I believe, the fourth uh, Birds album I got. Uh, so when I, I had a college class, music and, uh, music and Art since 1945, and we watched some like documentary in there. I don't even remember what it was on specifically, but it was just a bunch of like rock stuff. Uh, and they had this little clip of uh, McGuinn explaining uh, Tambourine Man and like how he changed it to the time signature and stuff and playing the uh, part on the 12 string. And I just kind of like got that 12 string sound stuck in my head and really wanted to hear it. So that's kind of how I got into the band. Um, and I would say that the Birds are my second favorite band um, of any band. Like the Beach Boys is my, is my favorite. And then the birds. I probably listen to the birds a little bit more. Um, honestly, like I listen to them way more than I, I should. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. They're kind of and they're kind of the band that changed my opinion a little bit on like people covering stuff because they do so many covers and I used to kind of like frown on that. But um, I mean, I enjoy their stuff so much that I kind of had to to change my opinion on it a little bit. Um, so uh, on this album, the line of the band, you, well, there are some uh, session people on at least two of the songs on here as far as I know. Um, I'm pretty sure like the rest is, is mostly these guys because you can kind of tell um, a difference in the playing um, if you compare like the tracks that you know that the, the or that I know that the session guys are on. Um, so anyway, line of the band, you have uh, Gene Clark vocals, tambourine, and he's kind of the main songwriter of the people in the band. Um, you had uh, Roger McGuinn, 12-string guitar and, and vocals, and yeah, I know his name was Jim when he did this, but he started calling himself Roger, and that's what his, is on all the solo albums and stuff, so I'm just going to call him Roger um, all the way through so that it's not confusing, because um, it's already confusing. Uh, but anyway, uh, then you have David Crosby, uh, vocals and rhythm guitar, uh, Chris Hillman bass, and Michael Clark drums. So that's the original five-man lineup of the Birds, and it's going to change multiple times about getting to that when I get to those albums, I guess. Uh, but yeah, for this for this album, um, it's it's really kind of there's like half covers, and the other half is pretty much Gene Clark originals. Um, some of them co-written with McGuinn. Uh, this would have been the fourth Birds album I got. Um, so I, Fifth Dimension was my first, then I got Younger Than Yesterday and Notorious Spur Brothers at the same time, and then this one. Uh, and it's, I don't, I don't know if I would ever say it's, I, I guess, no, it did kind of go through a little phase of, of being my favorite Birds album, I think after I got it, because I do really love this early sound that they have on this album. Um, it's more like, this is kind of like their early like pop rock stuff. It's not like as, as psychedelic. Um, this album really like I could see people um, finding it kind of boring because it doesn't even like really like rock that hard at all. Um, it's just kind of these nice like uh, catchy jangly songs. Um, but I don't know. I, I really dig that. I really just love the the sound of this album. And like even when some of the songs aren't like the greatest, just that kind of 12 string sound with the harmonies of this band is really like pull me into the to whatever they're doing uh, So I'm open to the title track mr. Tambourine man uh, Bob Dylan cover It's one of the tracks with the session musicians on it. So you just have a uh, McGuinn playing his 12 string and then uh, McGuinn Clark and uh, Crosby singing on it, which I don't even think you hear really hear Gene Clark that much on this version um, It's mostly just heard like it's pretty much all McGuinn in the verses um or is all McGuinn in the verses. Uh, I was familiar with the, the Dylan version of this song way before I heard this version, um, and I really liked it. Uh, I still really do. Um, Dylan's kind of a weird one for me because like I've been a Dylan fan for a long time, but I don't have his whole discography. I think like 
it was a lot of his albums just kind of I could never find them in the store growing up and then I've just like as I've been buying people's discographies for some reason I've just kind of put it off I think it's because how like many albums he has it's a little bit intimidating um, but that's one of the ones that I'm kind of slowly getting uh, more of his stuff now um, but yeah I was I was always a fan of his version of the song and uh, but I, re I do really like this version um, it is, you know, shorter, they always like, cut it down uh, for the radio, and I, I don't know if I'd want them to do, like, the full version like this, honestly. Uh, but I do think it's a great, great opening track. Um, Eldon McGuinn's vocal on it. I hear a lot of people kind of be like McGuinn's, or compare McGuinn's voice to Dylan, and, like, I don't really think that he is, like, a Dylan sound alike. Like, hey, he sings the Dylan songs on here, but I don't think that his voice sounds really anything like Dylan. Um, and I, I'm... I, I like both of their, their voices really well, but I'm a, a huge fan of uh, Roger McGuinn's voice and, and uh, his guitar playing as well. Uh, so a lot of great singers in this band, really. McGuinn, Crosby, uh, Gene Clark. Um, Hillman, once he starts singing, gets pretty good, especially like he got better later. And then, you know, Graham Parsons coming in later. and, and um, So yeah, a lot, of, a lot of great singers through this band. Um, but... Uh, yeah, strong, strong title track. Uh, second track, I feel a whole lot better. Uh, great Gene Clark song. Uh, this, it's kind of weird, like his voice, I feel like, he does sound really good on this album, but he sounds different than he does definitely later on, you know, in his career. And I just like, I love Gene, Gene Clark's voice, like kind of later in his career. Um, a little bit more than on this album, but he does sound really good on this album as well. Uh, and feel a whole lot better, great song. Probably my favorite Clark song on here, but there's another one that's really close. Uh, I don't think he gets enough credit as a as a writer and just as like, um, I mean, he was only around for two albums in this band really, but he was so important. Well, I guess the reunion as well, so three, but and four if you count Briefly. But uh, he wasn't in the band very long, but um, just so influential to them being you know the early main songwriter. Uh, third track, Spanish Harlem Incident, another Dylan cover, and this one kind of is just like, I love it, uh, a little too short for me almost because I like it so much. Uh, just a, a really cool little song. Uh, fourth track, You Won't Have to Cry, a song by Clark and McGuinn, and I've always liked this one. Um, I, I like their harmonies a lot on it, and it's got some, uh, some cool guitar by McGuinn. Um, Fifth track, Here Without You. This is kind of the one that's tied for uh, Feel a Whole Lot Better is my favorite Gene Clark song on the album. Um, it's it's just a, a great song. And when they go to like the, I don't know if you would call it like the bridge or whatever, where it gets to the, uh, I know it won't last part. That song, their, their voice is just like, the whole song just kind of takes off there and it's just great. Heck, is a Pete Seeger cover. Um, the bells of, well, they, they say Rimini, but I... I think it's pronounced Rumney. Um, from at least that's like McGuinn tells this story in his live stuff when he plays this um, about how uh, a lady from Wales told him he was pronounced or they pronounced it wrong. So I, I think it's Bells of Rimney. Sorry if I get that wrong. Anyone uh, from Wales, but yeah, uh, this this song, I think it's a great cover. Love the band's playing on again. I think uh, it's probably like Michael Clark's standout track. Um, on drums, but yeah, uh, just a, a, another really great cover. Uh, seven track, All I Really Want to Do, Dylan cover. Uh, this is like easily my least favorite song on the album. Um, just never really, I, I, I think I've heard the Dylan version before. I uh, can't say if I'm a big fan of it or not because I think I only heard it like a few times, not enough to have, have an impression. Uh, but here I just, I don't really, I don't love it. It's kind of boring. I think um, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of the chorus. Uh, I have to say I like the. There's a single version on the uh, in the bonus tracks, which I'll talk more about the bonus tracks at the end. But I like that better than this album version. But I still don't love it. Uh, the eighth track, I knew I'd want you. Uh, Gene Clark song, and it's probably it's not his strongest contribution to the album. It's probably like my least favorite of his originals on here. But I also don't think it's bad by any means. It's, um, it's just not like quite up there with his other ones. Uh, 
but it, and it's it's kind of short. Um, apparently, it's the Wrecking Crew playing on it. Uh, so yeah, but uh, it's not not bad, just not the best. Uh, ninth track, it's no use. Uh, another song by Clark and McGuinn. Uh, this is probably like the the most rocking song on the album, mostly uh, due to McGuinn's guitar. Um, but some really cool uh, uh, twelve string playing on this, uh, and pretty pretty solid song. Uh, tenth track, don't doubt yourself, babe. Uh, cover. It's kind of like a little bit lightweight compared to their other covers on this album, lyrically, I feel like, but uh, it's it's really catchy, um, and I, I like their performance on it. It's another one that's got some, some cool drums. Uh, the 11th track, Chimes of Freedom, is, uh, I think, my favorite Dylan cover on here. I uh, really, really love McGuinn's vocal on it. I think it's his best on the album, and uh, Crosby's harmony singing on it is great. He just kind of like floats above everything. Uh, just a, a great cover, a uh, great song. I love the Dylan version too, but um, yeah, my, definitely my favorite Dylan cover on here. And then the twelfth and closing track, uh, "We'll Meet Again," another cover. Um, and this one, I guess, was kind of a joke. I don't really know that for sure, but what I've read about it seems to like indicate it. It was a little bit of a joke by the band, and I actually love this song as a closer. I just say it's a really catchy song, and uh, they just they perform it so well. Um, so like the vocals are great, and uh, McGuinn's twelve string playing on the whole song is great. I love his guitar solo on it; just really cool. Um, so yeah, even though it's a joke track, it's a really strong closing track. One of my favorites on on here. Um, so yeah, uh, great album for for their debut. I think uh, this. CD version that I have has uh, some cool bonus tracks on it that I'll mention real quick. Um, the first one, she has a way, Gene Clark song, which actually, like in my in my perfect version of this this album, I would just uh, take that song and replace uh, all I really want to do, just stick it right there, and the album would be perfect. Um, but yeah, a really really cool song. Uh, there's a an alternate version of Feel a Whole Lot Better, which is good, but not you know quite as good as the regular version on here. Uh, another version of It's No Use and You Won't Have to Cry. Uh, the single version of All I Really Want to Do, which like I said, I like better than the album version, but I still don't like it as well as uh, She Has a Way. And then there's an instrumental called You and Me that's kind of interesting, but not like extremely exciting or anything. Uh, so yeah, Mr. Tambourine Man. Uh, I think it's a great debut album by these guys. Just really, um, I mean, it's not like uh, if if you like like nice, nicely done, just like uh, I don't know how to put it, like kind of just like show relaxing, like nice harmonies and jangly guitars and stuff. Then it's your thing. If you're looking for something that, like really rocks, then it, no. Um, but definitely a, a really good uh, '60s kind of. Beatlesy, folk, rocky, pop type of thing. So um, uh, it's late, and I'm rambling and not talking sense. So uh, yeah, I probably as good of a place as any to start with these guys, honestly, especially with the original lineup. Um, with the bird, like with the birds, one of those bands that I, if you're gonna get into them, I'd almost recommend just just listen to it in order. Um, you know, just start with this and go go through. So. Uh, yeah, uh, really strong debut.